Hi there, I'm Bill and welcome to Project Build where today we're going to renovate this small empty closet and go from this to this. So the thought for this closet is to have built-in drawers down at the bottom and these pockets of space that exist on both sides of the closet and then to have floating shelves from the built-in drawers up to the main closet shelf at the top so that you can really customize the space over here for what you need to store in your closet. This design was created around the idea of adding bypass doors here in the future. Now they're probably not as accessible as having folding bifold doors would be but I like the way they look more and they won't swing out into the room, which is a big plus for me. So there are a few problems that we're gonna have to deal with as we make these built-ins. The first is that we have these inside drywall corners back here and just due to the way that they're made with joint compound being built up to cover the corner seam and the tape, the closet is actually narrower at the back here than it is as you come out. So the closet's about 24 inches here at the front and it stays that way as you go towards the back, but as you get to the very back where it gets narrower, it gets down to about 23 and a half inches. Another issue is that walls in a house just tend to not be straight and kind of wavy to begin with. And since we have three of them to contend with here, we've got to make these built-ins in a way to deal with both of these issues. So that's enough background. Let's get to it. I started by marking at 30 and 3 8 inches, which is where the top of the drawer box is going to be on both sides, and then use my laser level to shine across the higher of the two marks, then marking this height also on the door jamb. Next, I cut the door casing a few inches above my mark with an oscillating multi-tool, scored the caulk and paint with a utility knife, and pried the door casing off. I also scraped off any old caulk that might interfere with the built-in. Lastly, I measured the distance to the back wall at several places, noting the shortest of these measurements at 14 and 3 8 inches. With the closet prepped, I went to the shop and cut out two 14 by 30 and 3 8 inch side panels out of half inch plywood. I also cut two 5 inch wide strips that were the same height as my side panels out of quarter inch plywood and several 2 inch strips out of 3 quarter inch plywood to be the cross piece stretchers for the drawer box and then cut these stretchers as well as some scrap pieces to be spacers during assembly to 22 and a half inches long on the miter saw. I took the quarter inch ply strips I cut before, brushed glue on the back of them, and then nailed them to the half inch side panel pieces with 5 8 inch brad nails. Doing this compensates for the narrower width at the back corners of the closet while still allowing for a 3 quarter inch edge at the front of the drawer box. I made another panel, stacked them together, and then put weight on top while the glue dried. And while that was drying, I cut out a 14 and a quarter by 24 inch piece of 3 quarter inch plywood for the top shelf of the box. This shelf needed to be about a half inch narrower at the back, so I marked a quarter inch in on both back corners, drew a line from the front corners to those marks with the straight edge, and trimmed both sides of the shelf with my jigsaw. Next I applied and trimmed edge banding on the front edge of one of the stretcher pieces, the top shelf, and on the thicker edge of both of the side panels. I drilled five total pocket holes at the top inside of each of the side panels, three into the thinner half inch part and two into the thicker three quarter inch part so I could screw it into the top shelf later. The key here was to use the half inch hole and drill bit settings on the thinner parts of the side panel and the three quarter inch settings for the thicker part at the front of the side panels. It's also important to make them mirror images of each other. You want one of the side panels to have the larger holes on the top left and the other to have the larger holes on the top right. This will make more sense once we actually get to assembling the box. I also drilled two pocket holes in the ends of each cross piece, making the holes further towards the back on the stretcher that had the edge banding on it. Back up in the closet, I used my speed square to draw a line at the mark I made earlier on the door jamb, and then I shimmed up one of the side panels to that line and held it in place, shooting nails into the door frame stud using my finished nailer. Then I placed the other side panel up on the other wall, added the stretcher that had edge banding on it, shimmed the other side panel out, and put in a pocket hole screw on each side. Next I added the rear stretcher, making sure it was level and tacking it in place with brad nails while I screwed one screw into each of the side panels. So there's no way to shim out the bottom of the side panel here, so I put in a temporary screw and used that to pry the panel towards the bottom cross piece while I screwed it in on both sides. With the box pretty much together at this point, I added the other pocket hole screws. Then I added one of my spacer pieces to hold the sides 22 and a half inches apart, put the top shelf on, added some weight to hold it in place, and then screwed it together on both sides using one and a quarter pocket hole screws on the larger holes and one inch screws on the smaller holes. 
With the box fully assembled, I secured it to the door jam stud using cabinet screws, as well as the floor sill on the back side of the closet. Stud locations on the back wall of the closet will vary, and I was lucky enough to have one just behind the front edge of my box, but you may have to search for one to screw the top of the box into. With the box secured to the studs, I shot one and a half inch brad nails through the side into the door jam to hold the door jam in place. And as a note, I assembled the door box inside the closet with the thought that if one of the side panels was too deep, I could take it out and trim it to size. But if I were to make this again, I would just make the side panels an inch or so shallower than the depth of the closet and assemble it outside the closet before putting it in as one unit. The floating shelf box is very similar to the drawer box build with side panels made from half inch plywood and five inch strips cut out of quarter inch plywood. Where it differs is that there's a five inch stretcher across the top, as well as fourth inch back panel for the box. It's also shallower to account for the variations in the back wall with the side panels only having a depth of 13 and three quarter inches. I glued and tacked the quarter inch strips to the side panels just like before, and then drilled three pocket holes in the ends of the five inch stretcher piece. Then I edge banded the side panels and the stretcher piece. I clamped the stretcher in place at the back of the top of the side panels, making sure that the banded edge was down towards the open part of the box and screwed it in place. Next, I clamped my spacer pieces across the bottom and middle of the box just to hold it to the correct width and then brushed on wood glue. I put the back panel in place, tacked it at the bottom corners with my brad nailer and then pulled the top of the box square to the back panel before nailing in the top corners and then the rest of the back panel. Back up in the closet, I cut the door casing just slightly above where the shelf box was going to be and removed it just like before. Then I lifted the box up into place. My side panel was pretty warped so I nailed it to the door jam stud using my finish nailer just to hold it straight and then countersunk and drove in 2 inch construction screws to secure it. For the other side, I put one of my spacers in place and shimmed out the side panel before countersinking and screwing it into the stud there. I thought it would be important to mention that I didn't have a stud behind the front edge on the other side of the closet, so to secure the bottom of that shelf box in place, I added a pocket hole, shimmed everything to width, screwed it into the top of the shelf below, put wood glue in the hole, filled it with a 3 8 inch dowel, and cut it off with a flush cut blade. I applied some wood filler on top of the plug, and once it had dried, I sanded it smooth with my orbital sander. So back to our original shelf box, with it secured to the studs, I shot brads into the side of the door jam, just like I did with the drawer box. So next I needed to add the shelf pin holes for our adjustable shelves. I put my laser level in line with the highest location of the top hole of my jig, just in case my shelf wasn't completely level, and then I drilled out the top hole. Then I put the locator pin in that hole, moved the jig up, and repeated until the holes were up to a height that I liked. I measured the height of that top hole and then made reference marks in the rest of the shelf box so I know when to stop drilling. For the holes at the back of the box, I removed the edge fence and flipped the jig around so that the holes were farther away from the back of the box. Then I made sure the top hole was even with my laser line and then drilled the rest of the holes at the back as well as the other side of the shelf box. The built-in boxes are pretty much made at this point, so I filled all the holes with wood filler and then sanded everything with my orbital sander to prepare for painting. Lastly, I took a scrap piece of 3 quarter inch plywood and used it to cut the door casing above the shelf box so I would be able to just slide the top shelf in here later. Next, I measured and marked the height of the four drawers by taking the height of the drawer box opening and dividing it by four. I started an eighth of an inch up from the bottom of the opening just so there wasn't a chance of the drawers showing in the gaps between the inset drawer faces and then just went up by my calculated distance from there. I took my speed square and drew a line at each of the marks and then I took one of my 12 inch long drawer slides, removed the inner slide and set it aside. For the slide at the bottom, I put down a scrap strip of plywood and then two 1 8 inch tile spacers on top just to hold the drawer slide up the correct amount. Then I used another 3 quarter inch scrap piece to set back the drawer slide so that the wood would be flush with the front edge of the drawer box. I then marked the horizontal slots of the slide, center punched and pre-drilled the holes for the screws. For the rest of the slides, I clamped my drawer slide jig in place on the line and then mark, center punch, and drill just like before. I should have also drilled the third horizontal slot that's in the middle of the slide at the same time, but I didn't, so I just had to come back and do that later. For the other side, I would have used a spreader clamp to hold the slide jig in place, but I don't actually own one yet, so I just wedged in my spacers to hold it in place and marked and drilled just like before. 
This worked, and while there's typically going to be creative ways to make whatever tools you might have work for what you're trying to do, the right tools for the job will always make things easier. And then I just repeated everything that we've done so far for the other side of the closet. With the boxes built, I moved on to making the shelves. I ripped a 12 inch wide piece for the top main shelf of the closet and then cut it to length using my circular saw. Then I cut four 13 and 3 quarter by 22 and 3 8 inch pieces from 3 quarter inch plywood to be the adjustable height shelves as well as two small pieces for shelves that are gonna be screwed into the main top shelf. These small shelves will vary in size based on your individual closet, and my two small shelves were actually different in size from each other. I then drilled four pocket holes into each of these small shelves on the edge that is going to butt up against the main closet shelf, and then edge banded all the exposed shelf edges. I left the ends of the main shelf uncovered for approximately the length of the small shelves on each end, and then didn't adhere the edge banding over the last inch or so. To make the drawers, I cut a bunch of five inch wide strips in the direction of the wood grain from half inch maple plywood. I normally use three quarter inch plywood for drawers, but these are gonna be small drawers to start with, so I thought it would be worth it to use the half inch plywood and gain a little more space. I cut two 13 and a quarter inch pieces for the size of the drawers on the miter saw, as well as two 20 and a half inch pieces for the long edges at the front and back of the drawer. I then used a quarter inch dado stack to make a quarter inch deep dado slot 3 eighths of an inch up from the bottom of the drawer pieces. If you don't have a dado stack, you can still make this slot by making multiple passes with the regular blade. It's just a lot more efficient to use a dado stack if you have lots of cuts to make. Next I drilled three half inch pocket holes on the non dado side of each end of the longer drawer pieces and then applied 5 eighths inch maple edge banding to the tops of all the drawer pieces. I cut drawer bottoms out of quarter inch maple plywood. These bottoms are 7 16 of an inch wider and longer than the opening of the drawer box so that they fit into the dado slots I cut with just a little bit of space to spare on each side. I sanded the edges of the drawer bottoms to make them easier to fit into the dado slots and then put it all together, starting with the long edges and using a soft hammer to assist with knocking things into place. Normally I'd put a few drops of wood glue in the slots just to keep the bottom panel from moving around, but these fit really snugly so I didn't bother. I clamped the sides flush with the front edge and screwed it all together with 1 inch pocket screws and then did the same thing on the back side. Then I marked the front of the drawer and used my orbital sander to sand the pocket holes down even with the rest of the drawer so that the drawer front will sit flushly against the drawer. I installed the inner slide that I removed earlier from the rest of the drawer slide. I placed it on a quarter inch spacer and used a scrap piece of wood to hold it flush with the front edge of the drawer while marking the horizontal slots. Then I center punched and pre-drilled the holes for the slide. I screwed in the slide using a number 8 flat washer on the screws as they were too long for the half inch plywood and would poke through the other side without the washers. And then I flipped the drawer around and repeated for the slide on the other side, making sure to mount it flush with the front of the drawer. And then I repeated until I had a big stack of 8 drawers. I do not recommend trying to play Jingle with these. To make the drawer faces, I first made a pattern template to reference. I cut a scrap piece of wood the same width as the drawer front that I borrowed from an existing drawer that I have. I marked from both edges to find the center and drew a center line with my speed square and then placed the existing drawer front on top and marked the cutout. I used my jigsaw to cut close to but not all the way to the line. I put double sided tape on the drawer front and then attached it to my template. Then I used a flush trim router bit to duplicate the drawer front exactly. I could have just used the drawer front as a template for all my drawer faces, but now I have a template for future use and there's always the chance that I could have damaged the existing drawer front. To make the actual drawer faces, I cut 22 and a quarter inch long pieces out of a 1x8, which is actually only 3 quarters by 7 and a quarter. Making the actual drawer face is just like making the template. I drew a center line, marked the cutout, and cut out most of it with my jigsaw. I attached the template with double sided tape and routed it flush on my router table. And if you don't have a router table, you can likely achieve a very similar result by making the cutout with a scroll blade on a jigsaw. Next I sanded the cutout area and then used a 1 16th inch round over bit on my handheld router to give a slight radius to all the edges of the drawer face. This is for sure an optional step, but it makes the edges look smoother and it makes the drawer face much more pleasant to touch, which you're going to have to do a lot to open the drawers. Then I just did the same thing for the other 7 drawer faces. Back up in the closet again, on one side I have a pretty straight wall with a fairly consistent gap that could just be caulked and be okay, but on the other side, not so much. So to fix this, I put one of my spacers at the top of the shelf box, measured from the floor, making a mark every foot up to the top, and then measured over from the wall at my reference marks, 
subtracting 5 sixteenths of an inch to leave a quarter inch reveal plus an extra sixteenth just for the little variations in the wall that can be filled with caulk later. Then I cut a quarter inch thick strip on the table saw and cut its length the same as the height of the built-ins. I transferred my measurements to the strip and then used a straight edge to draw lines to connect the marks. Then I cut down the line with my jigsaw, giving me a trim piece that was a lot wider at the top and follows the variation of the wall. I also cut a quarter inch thick by half inch wide strip to trim out the other side with the straighter wall. I primed the shelves, drawer faces, and trim as well as the built-ins in the closet and then began assembling everything. I first installed baseboard across the bottom of the closet between the two built-ins. Then I drew a quarter inch reveal reference line on the edge of the built-in and marked where the top of the baseboard came to on my trim piece, extended the line with my speed square, and then cut it out with my jigsaw. I nailed the trim piece in place using my brad nailer and then did the same thing on the other side for the other trim piece. I placed the main shelf up on top of the built-ins. Up in the top of the closet, I took one of my small side shelves and flipped it over upside down and marked the non-pocket hole edge to be trimmed to fit. So I cut this out with my jigsaw off camera and then came back and dropped it in place and then trimmed the edge banding that I left slightly unattached on the main shelf. Then I countersunk and drove one and a quarter inch wood screws down through the top of the shelves into the sides of the shelf box below being sure to clamp the smaller shelf in place before screwing it down. I drove in pocket hole screws to attach the small shelf to the main shelf. I also installed the shelf on the other side of the closet off camera. I applied wood filler to all of the holes in the trim as well as the edge banding corners where the shelves meet each other and sanded it once it was dry. I caulked all of the gaps around where the built-ins meet the walls by first applying a bead of caulk, then dipping my finger in warm water and running it down the caulk bead. I also caulked any of the other gaps that might be too big to just simply be painted. Once the caulk had dried, I painted two coats of white semi-gloss paint on everything and then taped off the closet trim and painted with the wall color to cover any of the caulk or paint I had gotten onto the walls and pulled that tape off while that wall paint was still wet to leave a nice clean line. I marked the two studs in the middle of my closet, placed the closet shelf bracket on each making sure that they were level vertically, and then marked the holes. Then I pre-drilled and screwed in the brackets. I had to use a right angle adapter to be able to screw in the screws at the top of the brackets. I then attached the shelf to the brackets by center punching and then drilling pilot holes again using my right angle adapter here with a hex drill bit and then driving 3 quarter inch screws into the shelf. I measured the distance across the closet at the top of the shelf boxes and then subtracted an eighth of an inch for the width of the closet rod bracket that's going to go up and marked it on the closet rod in several places. Then I cut the closet rod to length using a cutoff wheel on my angle grinder. You could use a hacksaw or a pipe cutter for this, but an angle grinder is much faster and sparks are always fun. I sanded the rough edge to get rid of any metal burrs and then took the rod back to the closet, slid the closed end bracket over the cut end of the rod, and pushed the rod down into place on the shelf brackets. I marked the holes for the closed end bracket and then slid the open end bracket in place and marked those too. And then, you guessed it, I center punched, pre-drilled, and drove in the screws for both of the brackets. Then I put the rod back up and slotted it into place. Next, I mounted the drawer slides on the holes I drilled earlier, checking for level and making sure they were the right distance back using a scrap piece of the wood that I used to make the drawer fronts. Then I inserted the drawers into the slides, making sure that the drawer front would still be flush once they were installed. I used 1 8 inch tile spacers to stack the drawer faces just to see how they fit, and I had a bigger gap at the top than I wanted. It's a lot easier to hide this gap below the bottom drawer, so I put spacers to hold it up into place, and then lightly clamped the drawer face to the drawer so it was held in place, but it could still be moved around. So I adjusted that drawer face up a bit to hide some of that gap from earlier, and once I was happy with it, I checked for level, and then clamped it down tightly, and countersunk and drove in two 1 inch wood screws at the bottom of the drawer into the drawer face. Then I repeated for the other drawers, putting spacers in between, lightly clamping until I was happy with the spacing. For the top drawer, I did more adjusting and I split the remaining gap evenly between the shelf above and the drawer face below. And once I was happy with the placement of all the drawer faces, I countersunk three more holes across the top of each drawer and drove in more screws. I repeated for the other side and now we're pretty much done making the built-ins. Now the only thing to do is to add the shelf pins and adjustable shelves as you see fit and customize the closet to how you need to store things. I have my closet set up to hold clothes and shoes on one side with storage bins up top 
and then some recording equipment and various office supplies on the shelves and in the drawers on the other side. These built-ins were designed so you can really customize them to store things however you see fit. And we are done making these built-ins and I am so happy with how they turned out. They look awesome. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you have questions about the build or just wanna let me know what you thought and about the video in general, be sure to do that down in the comment section. If you're not already subscribed, please consider doing that so you won't miss any of the builds that I'm gonna be making in the future. Until next time, go build yourself.